There was one person not in that video who said they refused to talk about Tom Brady into a camera again. So instead, and you don't know this is coming, surprise, guest. Ladies and gentlemen, Peyton Manning. You, you didn't know that was coming, did you? You didn't know he was here. I love this guy. I know I looked up to him uh, since the day that he was in high school football and he was the number one rated quarterback coming out. He was the number one rated high school recruit out of, is it Cardinal Newman, Newman Catholic? Yep, Newman, is Isidore Newman. Newman. Yep. Isidore Newman. And then went to Tennessee, won the Heisman. Did not win the Heisman. Close to win the Heisman, Charles. <laughs> so. Nice. This is about you. Let me yeah, talk about no, you. But I'm just saying, yeah. he's the guy that, you know, when we were quarterbacks in the league, and, I, and I, I tell this to so many young players, and I've been fortunate to be, have a great relationship with Peyton over the years, and I think for me there was so much admiration and respect for the way that he handled himself through the wins and the losses and how he conducted himself on and off the field. And he's an incredible friend of mine, and, uh, and I love him. I love his family. Got to know his family really well over the years always sending me text messages after games, after he retired, and, uh, and we shared so many great memories uh, in, in Indy, in Gillette Stadium here, and, and obviously in Colorado when he played for the Broncos. So thank you so much for being yeah, here. I'm honored to be here. Thank you very much. So, uh, so Peyton and I talked, and we decided this is two on one. So he didn't want you talking about him. We're gonna have him talk about you for the next few minutes. So. Sit back and relax. By the way, folks, up here with these two guys, 1,316 touchdown passes, seven Super Bowl wins, six Super Bowl MVPs right here. And a lot of you got to see them play some memorable games right in this stadium. So how blessed are we to have them here with us tonight? And since, since it's been such a warm welcome for the Manning family here tonight, <laughs> Let me be an honorary New Englander and pile on. Tom's first start, right over there in the parking lot now, September 30, 2001, was against you. How'd that game turn out? It did not go well for yeah, me no, no, uh, no. and the Colts, uh, no. Mike. Yeah. Um, I remember um, uh, meeting Tom before the game, and I just remember how kind of calm and cool and collected he was for a guy making his first NFL start. We had a brief conversation, and then uh, things kind of went downhill for me after that. My timing that day was better to Otis Smith and Ty Law than it was to my own receivers. I, um, I think I might have thrown one to Willie. I think Bruschi might have got one. They were taking turns uh, having interceptions on me. But like I said, I mean, I don't think anybody could have predicted what was coming, but to see the composure and just how calm and cool he was in the pocket that day, that was very impressive uh, to me for a guy making his first NFL start. And, and then three weeks later, because you guys were in the same division at that point, yeah. you guys go to Indy and you, he got you again. So we started out 2-0. and oh. Tom pretty much got me most of the time we played, Mike. Okay. Uh, and, and it's funny, um, people forget that, that the Colts used to be in the same division mm -hmm. as the Patriots. And, and so we obviously played twice a year. And then when realignment happened and we went to the AFC South, I think Tom and I both felt the same way, that we were almost like division uh, teams still because we played in the regular season, and for the majority of our careers, we played again in the postseason, whether I was in Indianapolis or in Denver. And uh, those first uh, games were so important because you wanted to win that game, so you were hoping to play them again at your home stadium in the playoffs. So can you share a story? Let's go back to... You guys start 8-0, eight, eight oh, they're 6-2, and two, Sunday night football game in Indy. They're up six, it's fourth and two. Coach Belichick decides to go for it at the two-minute warning, thinking Kevin Falk can get the two yards, which he did almost all the time. Really good defensive play stops it. You guys win the game by one. But you understand why Bill Belichick would do that because you did something like that playing against him over the years. Well, I'll tell you, the hardest thing about playing against Tom Brady was 
if you were down by you know a field goal or even four points and you were driving to possibly win the game on a two-minute drive I remember coach Dungy would say Peyton we want you to score to take the lead but only do it with about six seconds left we don't want Tom Brady to have any time to have the drive I'm like that sounds real easy coach um, <laughs> I'll score a touchdown, I'll wait till six seconds on the clock. But that's how you had to approach it when you were playing against Tom Brady because, as you heard his teammates say, he was the ultimate competitor and, and he wanted that ball with a two-minute drive opportunity to go win the game. He did it against the Rams, he did it against the Panthers. I used to watch other teams play against the Patriots and it would be a drive with about five or six minutes to go and a receiver would go out of bounds or they would have an incompletion, I would say, yeah, that's going to cost you the game right there because now Tom's going to have the ball with a minute and a half to go and he's going to just take him right down the field. So when we played against him, absolutely. So when we played against them, that was our mentality. Sure, try to win the game if we have a chance, but don't give him the chance to have the ball back. And even when he did, I was praying on the sidelines. I never pray on the sidelines, but I was like, Tom's got so many Super Bowls. Let me just have one chance to win one, maybe. So, but that's what a great player he was. I'll let you back in here. We and when we do games on TV, we get to do production meetings. These guys were two of the best because they're so smart, so accomplished. They tell you things you need to know. You would always tell us games against big quarterbacks that, oh, it's not about Brady against Manning. It's not a quarterback against quarterback. You're going against their defense. You're going against their defense. Were you lying to us? I think Tom and I both were probably lying Thank to you. you. Because it. Look, look, for me, I mean, obviously playing against these incredible defensive players, Brewski and Rabel and uh, McGinnis and Bill Belichick, you know, uh, being the incredible coach he was, it was going to be a great challenge going against the defense. But you knew you had to score points because Tom Brady was their quarterback. You couldn't have an off day. So it was a stressful week. It wasn't a relaxing week by any means when we were playing uh, in New England, uh, coming up here to Foxborough. Y'all were so nice to me all those years. Um, I, I, I can't remember, you know, which one of you exactly, but you always seem to know my mother's name. You talk about my mother. It was very personal. Really appreciated that. But, um, I mean, they like me here, Mike, because I always lost here. So I'm, I'm much more That's popular why. than Eli here. I can promise you that. <laughs> uh, but no, absolutely. You knew when you were playing against the Tom Brady team, you better be at your best. Because if you weren't, Tom Brady was going to beat you every time. What was it like playing against him? I, I think that I could never have been the type of player that I was without having someone like Peyton that I had to aspire to be like. And I looked at him as the gold standard for quarterback play, and I still do. And I see all these young players that are developing in the NFL and they're, they're young quarterbacks and there's nobody like Peyton Manning out there right now. And there's nobody that approached the game. And I, people always talk about talent, certainly at the quarterback position, and they go, oh, he's so talented. Watch this throw. You know where the talent is for a quarterback? It's right between the ears. And Every quarterback in the NFL needs to be capable of throwing the ball, but the real magic of being a quarterback is when you walk to the line of scrimmage and you're processing what you're seeing, are you able to get 11 guys on offense, everybody on the same page to do exactly what you need to do against the exact defense that you're seeing? Peyton led the way on that in so many ways. I tried to emulate that. After every season, I would watch every single Colt game to understand what they were doing on offense. Because in many ways, the guys you saw up here before, early part of my career, we were being led by Willie McGinnis and Teddy Bruschi and Rodney Harrison and Lawyer Malloy and Ty Law. We weren't this, we were. We weren't this dynamic offense that was running up points. We were late bloomers. And we were very fortunate to have this incredible defense. And I wanted to be a better offense. and and. We became that, and we grew into this incredible offense as well, but it took a lot of time, it took a lot of studying, and it took someone to look up to and aspire to be, and that was Peyton. Thank you very much. What I really appreciate about you guys as individuals is, I think of like Chris Everett, Martina Navratilova, one of the great head-to-head -head rivalries in sports. They became friends later in life, and as you said, you guys have become friends here when, when did that start to happen? 
Well, obviously playing against them uh, so many years, I felt like we, we met at a uh, Pro Bowl, um, got to know each other at a couple off-season golf tournaments, and we just had tremendous respect for each other. I was so impressed with Tom's commitment to be better every season than he was the year before. Always looking for some type of edge uh, in his training, in his film study, and we actually got together one off-season in 2009 at the at the height of our careers, uh, you know, Tom's coming off an MVP season. I'm coming off an MVP season. We met in a, a, a small town in Tennessee. I said, Tom, let's get together. Let's, let's kind of go real under the radar. You know, don't tell anybody we're coming in. Tom flies in on Mr. Kraft's plane, big, huge plane. I'm like, that is not what I said. I said, under the radar. That's against the salary cap, too, by the way. We won't get into that. Um, so, but we played golf together. We lifted weights together. We threw routes together with these high school receivers. We took their phones away, and we said, if you tell anybody that Tom Brady and I are working out together and that we're friends, we're going to kill all of you. So, <laughs> uh, But it was fascinating to see his work ethic, and we really picked each other's brains, not you know giving away all of our secrets, but we were kind of challenging each other to get better. It was a fascinating two days for me. It really was. It was a great three, yeah, two days, and, and it went so fast. And I have all those notes that I took from those days. And there were so many things that I had learned through talking with him because, again, when you reach a certain point at quarterbacking, you want to reach out to the other people that you really look up to to say, hey, what works for you? I couldn't do that with a lot of younger players. And Coach Belichick always drafted a lot of young players, and I loved having those guys in the room, but they didn't have the experience. So who could I really learn from? And Peyton was the guy that I could learn from, and we developed that relationship because we had one. And those two days were, I remember them like they were yesterday. They were meaningful to me. They meant the world to me. And, and they were just one of the experiences that we had together that I think made our friendship so strong. And then, of course, a couple of years ago, um, I was fortunate to get inducted into the Hall of Fame. Tom Brady left training camp uh, to come to uh, see my induction. And I'm honored to be here tonight. And I promise I'll be there in a couple of years when he uh, is there in Canton as well. Well. On behalf of, truly we can say this, football fans around the world, thank you to you two guys for giving us a generation of memories, of leadership, and of greatness. Great surprise guest, ladies and Amazing. gentlemen, a hand in Foxborough for Peyton Manning.